Hey, what's up? So I'm starting a new series this week going into next week for sorting algorithms, and we're going to do bubble sort, insertion sort, selection sort, heap sort, quick sort, in that order, and maybe we'll add march sort to the list too. So sorting algorithms are extremely important for coding interviews, and you must know them before stepping into any technical interview. And arguably, they're one of the few topics in coding interviews that are actually relevant on the job that you'd find yourself doing on the job. So as a software engineer, you'd need to somehow sort um, some collection, whether it's a collection of strings, integers, objects, or classes, you definitely need to know how to sort a collection. So let's kick off this series with bubble sort. Okay, when doing bubble sort, the most important thing to keep in mind is that you're only comparing two adjacent elements at a time. So we have this array of integers 5, 2, 3, 1, 4, and then we should sort this array. So we're only going to compare for bubble sort, only going to compare 5 and 2. After that, compare 2 and 3, compare 3, 1, and then compare 1, 4. It's like we're only comparing two adjacent elements at a time. When we're given an array, we have no idea whether or not it's sorted. So for bubble sort, we're going to assume that the array is not sorted because we don't know the elements in the array, we don't know their places, so it's safe to assume that the array is not sorted. So we're going to do that by having a Boolean variable that we keep track of. I'm just going to call it is sorted right here, and then we're going to iterate through the array. So let's go through the first pass. So we compare 5 and 2. And we say, is 5 less than or equal to 2? No, 5 is not less than or equal to 2. 5 is actually greater than 2. So 5 and 2 are out of place. 5 should appear after 2 in the array. So we swap them. Take 5, take 2, 2 comes here, 5 comes here. We're done with that. And now we compare 5 and 3. Is 5 less than or equal to 3? No, 5 is actually greater than 3, so they're out of place. So we swap them. Take 3, over here, take 5. And now we compare 5 and 1. Is 5 less than or equal to 1? No, 5 is actually greater than 1. So 5 should come after 1 and not before 1. So they're out of place, so we swap them. And now we compare 5 and 4. Is 5 equal to or less than 4? No, 5 is actually greater than 4. So 5 should come after 4, so we swap them. So now we're at the end of the array, and there are no other elements to compare. We're done with the first iteration. So now we ask ourselves, did we ever swap elements while going through this iteration? Which in fact, we actually did. So if we swapped elements, it means that there may be potentially other elements in the array that are out of place. So we have to do another pass through the array to sort those elements out. If we did not swap elements, it means that the array is sorted. So in other words, we're only going to stop iterating through the array and swapping elements if we go through a full iteration from the first element to the last element without swapping anything. This means that there were no elements at all that were out of place. So we can be 100% sure that the array is sorted. And now we can just return the array. So now, did we swap elements while going through the first iteration? Yes, we did. So we have to go through another iteration and then sort other elements. So do it again. We're going to start at 2, compare 2 and 3. Is 2 less than or equal to 3? Yes, so we do nothing. We move on to 3 and 1. Is 3 less than or equal to 1? No, 3 is actually greater than 1, so 3 should come after 1. So we swap them, take 3, and we compare 3 and 4. Is 3 less than or equal to 4? Yes, 3 is less than or equal to 4. So they are in place, and then we compare 4 and 5. Yes, they're in place, so we do nothing. And then we ask ourselves, while going through this pass, did we ever swap elements? Yes, we actually swap 3 and 1. So we have to go through another iteration. So we start over, and then go through 2 and 1. Is 2 less than or equal to 1? No, 2 is actually greater than 1, so 2 should come after 1. So, grab 2, swap them. And then compare 2 and 3. They're in place because 2 is less than 3. And then we compare 3 and 4 in place. We compare 
4, and 5 in place. And then we compare nothing with the energy array. And then we ask ourselves, did we ever swap elements while going through this array? While going through this iteration? Yes, we actually swapped 2 and 1. So we have to go through another iteration to check. So now we compare 1 and 2. Is 1 less than or equal to 2? Yes, 1's less than or equal to 2, so we do nothing. And then we compare 2 and 3. Is 2 less than or equal to 3? Yes, 2 is less than or equal to 3, so we do nothing. And then we compare 3 and 4. Yep, do nothing. We compare 4 and 5. Yep, we do nothing. So now we ask ourselves, did we ever swap elements while going through this particular iteration? No, we did not swap any elements. So this means that all the elements were in place and we can be 100% sure that the array is sorted. So now we can just return the sorted version of the array and it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is perfect. So bubble sort is not that optimal as you've seen because we keep going through the array and then keep looping through and then swapping elements until we're sure that the array is sorted. Even when the array is sorted, we have to go through one final pass to actually make sure. So it's really not that optimal. More optimal sorting algorithms would be insertion sort, selection sort, and others, and we're going to do those later. But for now, let's dive into the code for bubble sort. Alrighty, so first thing we want to do is to get our boolean that's going to keep track of whether or not the array is sorted. So we call it is sorted. Initially, it's going to be false because we know the array is not sorted, we assume. And then while the array is not sorted, we have to keep iterating through and swapping elements until the array is sorted. So we say while not is sorted, and then we keep iterating through. So we do a for loop i0, i is less than nums.length, and then we compare the element at i to the element at i plus 1. So this should actually lessen nums the length minus 1, so we don't go out of bounds. So we can say if nums at i is greater than nums at i plus 1, it means that it's out of place. We have to swap i, um, nums at i and nums at i plus 1. So I'm just going to write um, swap them. And I'm quickly going to write a helper function for um, swapping, just call this public void, swap, it takes in an integer array, and takes in two indices, i and j, and then we declare an integer called temp, and then we set temp to array at i, and then we set array at i equal to array at j, and then we set array j to temp. This is a classic swap function, and that's it. So all we have to do is just call swap on, on the array is going to be nums, um, i is just going to be i, j is going to be i plus 1, and that's it. So if the number at i is less than or equal to the number at i plus 1, it means that it's in place, we shouldn't do anything. But we have to make sure that this loop right here is not an infinite loop, because right now that's exactly what it is, because we're not resetting the value of is sorted. So when we enter into this loop, we have to reset the value to is sorted. We assume that it's already sorted. True. So we could potentially break out of this loop whenever this if condition is not met. So if this if condition is ever met, it means that our array is not sorted, so we have to go through another pass. So is sorted is equal to false. That's pretty much it. So now all we have to do is to return the um, nums array. And quickly going to make sure that I have everything. Run this. And it's accepted. So I'm going to try to submit this. We're probably going to run out of time because bubble sort is incredibly slow, but let's try it. Cool. We ran out of time. Time limit exceeded. So we had this input. What, what input was it? We had to sort 
all those numbers. It's like over a thousand, two thousand. Look at look at all this. Like bubble sort can't handle this. We're definitely gonna exceed the time limit because we're only comparing two numbers at a time. And then after that, we have to go through another pass. So we're mostly gonna run out of time when we have these huge collection of elements. But this is bubble sort for you. It's good for things that are let's say 10, 15 elements in the array, maybe 50. But then advise you if you don't really know how many elements you're going to have in the collection then use a more optimal sorting algorithm so let's dive into the time and space complexity of bubble sort for time complexity we're going to talk about three cases the best case the average case and the worst case so for the best case imagine we were given an array that was already sorted and we did not swap any elements we didn't do anything at all we're only going to go through one pass through the array and find out that everything is in place and then we return the array so that's going to be an o of n time and for the average case let's say we iterated through the array uh, in one pass and then we found a couple elements that were out of place and then we swapped them and then we iterate through the array a final time and then everything sorted and then we return the array so that's going to be an o of n squared time that's o of n squared time and then for the worst case it's also going to be n squared because we keep iterating through the array, finding elements, and then iterating through, finding elements, iterating through. So it's also going to be an O of n squared time. For space complexity, we're doing everything in place. We're just swapping elements, which is an O of one operation. So total space complexity is going to be O of one space. So that's it for this video. Bubble sort is a really, really slow sorting algorithm. I don't recommend it at all, except for collections of really few elements. And uh, if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel and comment down below. Let me know if there are other innovative ways we could have implemented bubble sort and I'll be happy to check them out. I'll like the video for the YouTube algorithm and share it around the community and I'll see you in insurgent sort. Bye.